we'd like to welcome all of his glory family from all over the world. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of A Window into the Supernatural. I am very excited to introduce our guest today. He is a returning guest. He packs a powerful prophetic punch, and that is Barry Wunsch. And he is from Canada, our sister nation, right to the north of us. But he is a prophet to the world, and he has a special heart for America, which I am very thankful. <laughs> and we are growing a special heart for Canada as well. We can't do this without each other. So welcome to the show, Barry Wunsch. Oh, it is my pleasure to be with you again here today, uh, Diana. And uh, I just, you know, it's such an honor to walk as, you know, brothers and sisters in arms during these days that we're in. And uh, the, the melting together and, and the bond that's forming between our nations, it is so precious. It is so true. Uh, Barry, you have got a ton of encounters and revelation uh, that you can share with us today. And I don't want to delay any further and get into that, but would you open us with prayer, please? Absolutely, my, my honor. So, Father, we, we come to you today, Lord, we just, we set aside this, this time for you. Lord, I pray above all that your, your name would be glorified, Lord, in, in everything that is shared and done here today. And Lord, I pray that you breathe upon your word and that which uh, you've destined it to accomplish. So, Father, blow upon it that it may land and go uh, and accomplish that you, from what you've accomplished it for. So, Lord, I pray for each one watching that you would just uh, come upon them afresh today, Lord. And, Lord, we invite also the, the hosts of heaven to come and to be with us, to minister to us and your kids today, Lord, as we gather. Father, I pray that there would be nothing that would be left said uh, or undone the Lord that you would like to do today as we as we gather in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, Barry, you were sharing with me as we chatted a bit before the show began that you have a brand new uh, revelation that you'd like to begin to share with us. So please. He had the Danny of this morning uh, and even yesterday, you know, there's just been a turmoil, uh, you know, in the spirit that, you know, it's been quite intense actually yeah and this morning i woke up and just fighting this almost like a paralyzing anxiety uh you know that was trying to come on me and literally it actually felt like i had a truck parked on my chest and i'm going like lord like what like what is this like where's this coming from and so anyways i prayed and and just was kind of pressing in because sometimes you know it might be our own soulish you know mm -hmm. places that are you're reacting to things and other times, you know, it, it can be a place of drawn in intercession. And so anyway, as I was, you know, praying this morning, I was taken into a place where in the spirit where I saw countless ones that were under, you know, some great oppression. And, you know, I came in and I literally saw, uh, you know, I, I was taken in and I saw that there were, there were some, you know, some single parents and some seniors, and I tell you, things were so tight for them. You know, financially, uh, you know, they, they just weren't sure how they were going to make ends meet. You know, hard decisions to make for, for anyone. And, uh, you know, fixed incomes and just different things and inflation. And I just felt that, you know, the, the, that pressure and that anxiety that comes on, on many. And, uh, and then I was taken in, I saw that there were others that, you know, struggling with family hurts and broken relationships and misunderstandings and, you know, addictions of all sorts. You know, essentially just people trying to find a bit of relief from the pain of, you know, some of the blows that had, had come against them. And so I just felt the Father just by his, his great tremendous love. You know, I just felt Jesus reaching out to these ones today by his grace and by his love just to bring an encouraging word that he's got you covered. Now, there were some that were hurting so badly, you know, that they just were considering and, and wanting any way that they could to get out of some of the hurt and the pain and, and the, some of the circumstances, you know, that they were kind of battling against. 
And I just felt the Lord, you know, he, Jesus is waiting for you today with his open arms. He is your healer and he is your deliverer. I saw, you know, there are many that, you know, the rejection uh, that, you know, many of, of, you know, God's people have experienced was so hurtful and painful that, you know, they could hardly function, you know, just trying to, to walk that out. And, and I just felt, you know, God has you today. And he's, I just felt, a, you know, that he's coming in at a time he's going to use it all. You know, there'll be healing for each and every one. I'd also seen some that who had, I'll say, they slipped. <clears throat> they, they had been overcomers in certain areas of their life. But, you know, they, they had a little bit of a setback. And, you know, now they were fighting shame and guilt and self-condemnation. You know, that they'd made a mistake. You know, they were tricked and they were snared by the enemy. And essentially, the enemy has targeted certain ones to try and hit them, to take them out of the game, and basically to try and divert the destiny that God has upon them. So, uh, but I'll say God has the final word. And you're his beloved, and he's going after all that has beset you ah, with his loving vengeance. And so I look at it, it's an invitation for an upgrade. And, you know, if you've been under some things, God is going to use it all and raise up an authority in you over those areas to stand and bring others into freedom. The other thing I saw, I saw the lonely. And you know, there were many that, you know, they, they were widowed or Widow, widowers, you know, I mean, different, you know, situations that, you know, there were many that were just so lonely. Things just didn't work out for them as they planned or expected. And, you know, they were thinking they'd missed it. And, and even some had thought they were disqualified, you know, to function in the kingdom. But, you know, the Lord, again, he'll use it all for good. And yes. the Father's timing is much, much different than, than ours. And then I also saw uh, those who were rejected <clears throat> and misunderstood in the church. Now I saw a religious spirit, you know, an old guard, pushing out and restricting the Holy Spirit to move in as people. And so they were doing, you know, I was taken to a meeting, and they were kind of sterile and, uh, you know, not really much life in them, and, you know, kind of a, a form of, you know, a, but without, you know, the, the life and, and that of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, it's a form of church that is not what it was created to be. You know, and many of these, you know, they've been through betrayals. They've been through spiritual abuse, <laughs> been through a few beatings. And these were precious saints, you know, misunderstood, kicked aside and, and disposed of, you know, leaving, you know, some great pain in them. And so, you know, those ones who were shut down, who were attacked, who were rejected, who were hurt by those uh, that should be a safe place, but weren't, you know, they were kind of feeling lost, displaced, and alone. And uh, so those insecure and controlling leaders, you know, kind of, be, you know, concentrating, building their own kingdoms, regard with, you know, little regard for the flock. I want them to know today that the Father sees you and... He loves you, he loves you, and he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. Then I was taken in, I saw, you know, those with mental and physical health battles, seemingly stuck, like, huh, like they just couldn't measure up, you know, wondering what's wrong with them, you know, struggling day by day just to survive, not sure quite how to overcome it, but the Father <clears throat> has you covered today, and Jesus' blood paid the price and it speaks a better word, and there is nothing that his blood doesn't cover. Then I, I was taken in, and I saw businessmen and women looking over the books of their business. Inflation costs rising, tight margins, business not quite what it once was, and, uh, you know, some of them just unsure how they were going to keep the doors open. You know, shelves, you know, hard to stock, uh, employees, hard to find and retain. I even saw farmers looking at their books, considering, and I'm sure, should I even try to plant another crop this year, or should I just take the government payouts? This isn't what they signed up for. So I just felt that, you know, that the Lord is breaking off fear today off of those, you know, ones that, 
the enemies try to come in to beset them and hold them back from the the destiny that's upon them. So I decree and declare over these ones just a supernatural provision, and wisdom and favor to walk through these days. So, and then I saw a couple other things uh, with this. I saw that there were some that were being kind of held in in a hostage place in a painful, unhealthy relationship that, you know, they remained there because they had food and shelter security. <clears throat> and even though, you know, the, the place they were was unhealthy and abusive at times, they, they were, you know, they really didn't have an option to, to move out of that. And so I just felt that, you know, the Lord is there and uh, an overseeing, he sees every, every detail and so I declare and I decree breakthrough over each and every one that would find them place in this spot. And I just declare a shift over them and their situation. And then uh, I'm moving a bit rapidly, but the next one I saw is I saw parents and they were on the kitchen table, moms and dads, and they were talking and they were grieved and they were concerned about their kids, you know, sending their kids to woke, to woke schools, into perverted environments and curriculums, identity and gender, identity agendas pushed left, right, and center, you know, and options seem very few for these families, and they kind of seem stuck in the system, but the Lord sees you, and he hears your heart, he sees your righteous anger and frustration in it all, and you're not alone. And so I saw that there was a provoking within some of these families to stand up in a new way and raise their voice like never before and make a difference. So I saw the Lord is raising up fathers and mothers as deliverers with him in this hour. And uh, what has come against what has come against you shall provoke you to fight and stand for the children. And there are going to be children released with the word of the Lord in the face of injustice. And they're a mighty generation that won't be lost. So as I'm journaling this out, the Lord dropped a word on me. And this is as raw as, as, as it gets. And I mean, this is just <clears throat> fresh from this morning. But he said, Barry, tell my people that it will soon be time to celebrate. Tell my people that things are coming to a head. And I'm working in ways you cannot see yet, for it is all being brought into the light, <laughs> my light. And there's nothing that remains in the darkness. For I am your protector, I'm your salvation, I'm the lifter of your hand, and I'm your everlasting help in times of trouble. For I'm bringing my precious ones hey, out of depression. I'm bringing my beloved out of oppression, for I am your deliverer. So draw unto me and come close once again. For many have been even angry with me and have blamed me for situations that are not for me. So to set the record straight, I'm a good, good father. So let me pour in the healing balm of Gilead <laughs> into every word, wound, and every painful place in your life. And let me wash away every hurt, all pain, hey, all rejection and every circumstance the enemy has used to beset you and let me deliver you from all unbelief hope that separates us for i love you and for i'm drawing unto you my beloved sons and daughters with a fresh baptism of my love for you for as you continue to draw unto me i will meet every need and i will fill you afresh with renewed strength and fresh manna every day. So trust in me and keep the faith. For can you not see what I'm doing in this hour? The battle is epic. For I'm overturning every power and principality that has left held my people captive. And I'm pulling the carpet out from under them. For they do not have the upper hand. For what the enemy has used as a setback, I'm using as a setup. I will use all that has beset you to strengthen you and expand your heart and your understanding. For you're coming up higher. You're coming above it all. And you'll be a weapon in my hand. 
you will bring many up with me, and things will never be the same, for they are going to be much greater. For we do not battle against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities, and they are coming down by my strong, mighty hand. Oh, remain in me as I remain in you, and we will be one as the Father and I are one. From this place, and this place alone, you shall be overcomers. So let my perfect peace saturate you today and all the days to come. Rest in my love. Rest in my perfect love. For it casts out all fear. And as you do it, it will overflow in your life. And you will never be the same. And no one will be safe from my love as I release it through you. <laughs> and holy is the word of the Lord. So, very beautiful. Oh. Okay, what I saw while you were... Okay, you're one of those prophetic spies who get sent into the enemy camp like Elijah did and could hear the plans of the enemy. Yeah. But the Father also tenderly uses you to go into the homes of those that he sees are in distress. I mean, he values countries. He values every individual. And what I saw was just a big faucet of water pouring out and if people will get under that they'll be refreshed and renewed and healed yes so i just encourage you watch this and then watch it again and just receive everything that barry just released in that powerful word and uh, if you're new to barry and you may be wondering about the the crunches or the they're just power surges from the holy spirit um and that's just how God works with him. And um, I'm very grateful for him and all of the power searches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like grabbing onto a million volts of electricity. Um, every time the time you learn to see it, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's the Father. He is so powerful and yet so intimate. I mean, what a God. Wow. All right, move on. Um, yeah, whatever you want, choose. There's amazing. Yeah, there's, a, there's a few places we could go, but there's another, you know, something I just felt to share. Uh, okay. Gen Z, uh, Generation Z. You know, I just, the Lord has, you know, really put them on my heart in the last while. And, uh, you know, as they're brought into the kingdom, I mean, they're going to go much farther than we have. And, you know, that old saying that our, our ceiling is going to be their floor. And, you know, they're going to go to places that, that we haven't been able to go and with a boldness. And so I feel like as, as this generation that we so desperately need, we need what they have and what they carry. When, when they see the deception that has indoctrinated this generation. And when they see the truth and the Holy Spirit sheds his light of truth in them, they're going to come out unencumbered wow. with truth and with power in what, what they're going to speak and share in an authority. And they are a new wineskin in this hour that we desperately need to you know, see this harvest come in and see um, revival and reformation come in in our land and so you know the, the, the Gen Z's you know I look at it this way relationships are only as deep as they are open and and this generation they get that and they want that you know they don't want any BS they don't want you know they want the real authentic depth of connecting heart to heart and uh, they're not in it for the show they're, they're searching for a new breed of leader <clears throat> that's like a father, that's accessible, that's not hiding in a green room. You know, they want connection. And they want to be loved and accepted, you know, especially in times of uncertainty and pain. And uh, so why would they, you know, set themselves up for rejection to those that just don't care, you know, even though they, you know, they might be told otherwise. And the other thing is I don't, they don't want to be a project. You know, they don't want to be another notch on someone's religious belt. You know, they, they just want to, you know, love for one another. 
And, uh, and may we do that and love for love's sake outside of an agenda of a religious spirit. So, uh, you know, we got to get this right. You know, we have to uh, basically nurture and walk together because, boy, we need them in this day. Amen. So, yeah. <laughs> that is a good word. What, what we see as destruction the enemy has sown into that generation, God is going to turn it around and it will become their strength and it will totally defeat the enemy. And I love that. God wins. <laughs> yes, yes. We are going to take a short break and hear from his glory sponsors, but come right back because Barry has a word about foxes running around with their tails on fire. We'll be right back. 